Hey guys, what is going on? Randall419, the man with the million, here with a top 10 video, the first of many for this week. And in this video, I'm going to talk about my favorite indie games. You know, I, I, some people have nicknamed me Randall Indie, you know, uh, like Lady Foxfire, she calls me Randall Indie. But this is going to be a, a video about my, my favorite ID at Xbox slash Indie, because I know not all these games are ID at Xbox. Uh, but I like to call them that because it's just easier that way. So this is going to be my top 10 video for ID at Xbox games for the year of 2016. I uh, just wanted to first say, uh, you know, I hope everybody had a great holiday. I had a great one. Thanks for all the well wishes on Xbox Live and on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me and all the places, Xbox Live, my gamer tags, RandallThor19. All that stuff is in the description of the video. I have a link to the marketplace, the store link for all these games in the description as well. So let's get into it. So my number 10 uh, game this year is a the Bug Butcher. You might have seen this. In uh, a Rand's Roundup, the first Rand's Roundup I ever did, which I kind of, uh, I'm no longer doing Rand's Roundup. I'm just going to do individual videos for each game I play now, um, in case people are wondering. I think, you know, I, it'll get more, I can I can cover more games that way instead of just a couple games in one video. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight as many uh, games that I play. Like, for instance, I just did a video earlier today for Her Majesty Spiffing. <laughs> Check that out. That was my, my last video. I got another video coming up for Bloody Blast 2 or whatever it's called. I forget the name of it right now. But let's see. So Bug Butcher is a fast-paced action, like, combo game. It, it kind of plays a, a lot like Pang Adventures, if anybody remembers that from back in the day. And the whole point of the game is to just get, uh, to kill all the enemies on the screen, but to do so without getting hit and building up your your combo meter. Uh, you, you pick up power-ups, like double damage, and uh, like you get machine guns or rocket launchers to help you out. And the, the objective is basically to reach amount of score points. They give you three stars if you reach a certain threshold as well as getting the combo. And that's all relatively easy if you don't get hit. If you don't get hit at all during uh, the level, you will get three stars. Uh, it's a fairly easy completion as well. Um, it does take a little bit of skill. Um, I didn't really have that much issue, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm good. I just I just really like this type of game. I thought it was a lot of fun. I believe it's it goes for ten dollars. I recommend it. it I, this game is is a blast. I think uh, if you if you like these fast-paced action arcade games, then pick it up. And my number nine game is Gone Home. It came out in January of this year on the Xbox One. I know it came out even before then. I'm not sure if it came out in 2015 or 2014 on the PC. But as I am an Xbox-only gamer, you will only find Xbox games on these countdowns because I don't own a PS4 or a Nintendo Wii U, and I don't have a gaming PC, so all the games I play are on Xbox. Uh, hopefully that will change in the new year, I might get a PlayStation. But my ninth best game, I did Xbox-wise, is Gone Home. And I know there's a lot of mixed, you know, talk about this game. A lot of a lot of thinkle, people think it's pretensions, but I liked it. Um, it kind of subver subverts what you expect of a game. You, you originally come in here and you think that this is going to be some horror-type game, but it's really not. It's, I, it's a mystery game. I really enjoyed walking around the house in this fully realized house too, like turn lights on, it's got notes. And it, it, you basically are just uncovering what happened to your family in the house when you were coming home. And it's it's such an interesting kind of game that a lot of a lot of games since then, like walking simulators, have, have copied this simple formula. Um, I greatly enjoyed it. I didn't know anything about it before I played it. It is expensive at twenty dollars. It can only last a, a, a couple hours once you kind of figure out where you're supposed to go and solve the puzzles. And I mean, hell, you can even beat this game in an, in like a minute. In fact, I think there's an achievement to do it. But either way, I like stories. I like fully realized worlds like that. That's what, you know, if you guys have been following, following me, you'll understand that I like these type of games. They're my thing. And you'll see a few more games like this in my top ten. But I know this game isn't for everybody, but I greatly enjoyed it. 
Coming in at number eight in the top ten ID at Xbox games of the year, we have Hue, which was an, a, a cute, fun little uh, platformer that came out uh, a couple months ago from Curve Digital. I like this game quite a bit. Um, I do like puzzle platformers, and this one has a unique twist. You use color to solve puzzles. Uh, this is a uh, clip is taken from the beginning of the game when you only have one color, but I actually have them all because I beat the game. So as you progress, you, you unlock one color and then two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. Then the puzzles get more challenging because you have to deal with more colors. But I just love how this game looks. I know it has that Limbo-esque look for the main character, black with the two white eyes staring right at you. Um, and I, I like how the background, when you switch colors, is whatever you change it to. So blue, red, and it looks really great, especially contrasted with like the black floor and the black ceilings and stuff. It just really pops, and it, it's a fun game. It little drags on a little bit too much towards the end, but I think anybody who likes these type of games should pick it up. Um, I had a, I had a great time playing it. It definitely exceeded my expectations because at, at, you know at first I wasn't gonna pick it up, but I heard such great things from my friends like She Wolf and uh, GKB over at the console corner. Uh, check those guys out. They do a great podcast and they run a great channel. Um, but yeah, I, I just really like this game and uh, I, I hope we, uh, hopefully more people get to experience it. Coming in at number seven. We have the Turing Test uh, from Bulkhead Interactive. Uh, this is a puzzle game, and it's actually a really good puzzle game. You know, I know I'm sure if, if some of you have been listening to TXR Podcast, which, by the way, link is in the description. Podcast we do live Monday nights on YouTube as well as on iTunes. It's pretty much everywhere. It's an Xbox-focused podcast. I think it's really good. Check it out if you got the time. But anyways, we talked about this game on the show. Uh, in fact, my buddy Maca91 has a 100% walkthrough for anybody out there who wants to get the achievements. I will link uh, the video if anybody wants to check it out and help. And you can get your gamer score higher and your completions higher by by using this guide. But this is, uh, this is a... A puzzle game in the vein of Portal. In fact, that's what everybody said. It's a Portal game without the portals. Um, you are... You come to this planet and you're trying to find out why the people there are, have basically secluded themselves in there and you find these rooms have been redesigned to pu to be made a, uh, puzzly and you have this AI talking to you pretty much the whole time telling you the story that, you know, and it pushes it along pretty fast and, and pretty well it's i think so it's a great game their previous game before this was numa breath of life and i didn't like that game but this game is really good so bulk interactive they're doing some good work this is a fantastic game and these puzzles get pretty devious by the end of it so you might need that maka's walkthrough to figure out some of these puzzles because they get quite hard this game is expensive but if you love puzzle games, this game is definitely worth your time. Number six on my list is none other than Super Ot. Super Ot. Yeah, I know that's annoying. I remember uh, everybody complained about that during that trailer they showed off at, I think it was E3 2014 for Microsoft. Um, this is a... The first of its kind first person shooter puzzle game is the best way to maybe describe it. Uh, you shoot people, but the whole gist of the game and the whole hook of the game is that time only moves when you move. So there's this puzzle aspect to the game of like figuring out how to get through levels that is actually quite good. The game is really short though, and it's really expensive, but it's definitely one of the more unique games I've played this year. It's very stylized, um, super fun, figuring out the different ways to attack all the different levels, and the different ways you can, uh, you, you can punch somebody, take their gun, shoot, shoot the next person, and as his gun is flying towards you, grab grab it, shoot the guy behind you. There's so many different ways you could you could go and, and attack each of these levels. 
it's it's amazing to be honest with you there's a lot of replayability too because they have these endless levels these challenge levels that you can do um it's it's a tough completion if you're looking at it from there but it is a fantastic game um one of the best indie games out there my sixth favorite of the year and now we're going to be getting into my top five the creme de la creme the top five games for id at xbox slash indie indie games of the year all right so we're finally into the creme de la creme not saying the last five games were good because they are but these are my top five favorite games of the year from id at xbox uh number five belongs to the gorgeous and the just plain fun to play but hard as nails hyper light drifter this game is something to behold uh the first thing that you'll notice when you start the game up is the incredible art style yes i know it looks like an 8-bit game but you can see the love and care from these hand-drawn pixels especially when you know the backstory behind the game about the guy who made the game has been going through it uh basically his fight against heart cancer if i'm not mistaken uh but man this game is gorgeous the soundtrack is incredible probably the second best soundtrack of the year uh, maybe maybe i have to think about that more but it's just I, I can't get over how the game looks and to met to go along with that the game plays fantastic you attack you shoot you got this little dash that gets you you know over chasms and stuff but this game is freaking fantastic that's why it's in my top five I recommend this to anybody out there. Um, I think I want to say it's $15, although it's been on sale quite often or a few times here and there. Definitely pick it up when you get a chance. There's a lot of love and care that it went into this title, and hopefully everybody out there uh, considers picking it up and playing it. I think you'll be rewarded. And one of the other things this game does extremely well is it. there's no really dialogue, or at least a language like English. You pretty much have to learn how to what is going on for yourself especially when you go to like buy things um the use of symbols is important to this game but all in all this is an absolute must have must play uh and i i, I hope people more people will pick it out because it is one of the best indie games to come out in a long time so coming in at number four we have compo santo's first game Firewatch. Uh, Firewatch is a walking simulator game, and I'm, I'm sure you guys know that by now that I like these type of games because a couple of the things I like in my games is story and characters and dialogue. And this game has two excellent characters that are voiced to perfection by their voice actors with some great dialogue. Um, and it, it really goes a long way because there's not much you actually do in this game. You listen to the dialogue, you reply back with what you want to say, and then you give an objective to go somewhere, and you just follow the map and walk to that point. There's not much like gameplay in this game. It's all about the story, and it's all about the interactions between the two characters and Camposanto, the voice actors, and the writers nailed that. My opinion, of course. This is all my opinion. This is the top ten. This is my opinion of what I think these top ten games are. The ten best games that ID at Xbox put out this year. So, you know, if anybody has uh, an issue with that, hey, you're free to make your own video and, you know, say what your top ten is. But uh, this game also has a really intriguing story. It's one of the things that kind of drew me in and, and held me was this mystery that was going on in Firewatch. I wanted to know what was going on. I was thinking about different possibilities, like what could it be? And I'm not going to spoil how it ends, but just know that it has a great mystery with maybe not that good of a payoff, but still, check it out because it's worth it. Now, it's also very expensive as well. It is $20. A lot of people balk at that price. I think it's worth it, but then again, these are the type of games I enjoy. I like this. I thought, it, I thought it was worth every penny. But hey, if you're not, if you want the easy thousand, pick it up because this game will give it to you. If you if you want to play it but you don't have the funds, you want to wait, I'm sure it'll be on sale at, at some point down the line. But keep this game 
you know, on your on on your do list because it is absolutely fantastic. It's All right, here we go. The top three, and my third anyways, favorite ID at Xbox say, game of 2016 like is none other. No than oxen free in fact these all these t games in the top three could be really interspersed between one two and three that's how much i love these top three i recommend them to everybody even at the price tag even though i know people aren't you know these games are for everybody but this is night school studios first game oxen free it is a walking simulator, but more with a lot of... It's like a Telltale game, but a supernatural type of Telltale game. There is some crazy shit that goes on in this game. What makes this game so appealing to me, like I said, I just mentioned about Firewatch, was that story, characters, dialogue, they're so important to me, and this game nails all three. The story is fantastic. It's right up my alley. Uh, the characters are great. They're very, very well written. And, you know, it, it's just a game that I wanted to replay, which I did. I played this game, I played this game three times in a row. I played it once, beat it, was just like so enraptured. I played it immediately again. And then I played it immediately again. This game is fantastic, especially for a studio's first outing. What and this game the... also has a mystery similar to Firewatch that is that I wanted to like I needed to know what was going on like I was constantly like what's happening what's going on you know wh what is what is going on I, I would talk to my buddies who were playing this same time my buddy Sam and we were talking about possible things that was going on it was so much fun but this game is I, I'm running out of adjectives to describe these games. Amazing, wonderful, fantastic. This is why I play video games. I love playing these type of games. And I know that some people look down on indie games, but some of these, in my opinion, are better than the AAA games. In fact, a couple of these, or maybe three of these, might actually be in my top 10 games of the year. This is gaming to me. Uh, I just have so much fun and I, I play these games with, but they all just bring a huge smile to my face. I love it. And, and that's the highest compliment I can give when I'm just in there listening to what's going on, you know, listening to the dialogue, responding, you know, getting so in, enraptured into the moment and the story. That's that's just as awesome to me. And, and I thank Night School Studios for making this game. I cannot wait to see what you bring us next. Hopefully the game sells extremely well because it deserves it. Coming in at the number two spot is Virginia. I actually have a review up for this game on my channel. It's one of the first videos I did when I started this channel up. And for good reason. Virginia is an absolutely amazing experience from the beginning to the end. Very short. No words are spoken. This game isn't going to be for everybody, but I'm going to say it here right now. Because I've played through this game three times now. And each time I like it more, I notice, you know, different things about the game. I think it's a masterpiece, okay? I think it's a masterpiece because I think the developers of the game uh, did exactly what they set out to do. They tell a story basically using no dialogue and a soundtrack to push, a, yes, a crazy story, a David Lynchian story... But a story nonetheless about, you know, a corrupt city, yada, 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 the things that go into I honestly think this is a masterpiece. I, I, I've been rolling it over in my head, but this game is just so good. It has the best soundtrack in a video game I've heard in uh, maybe forever. I, I, I bought this off of uh, iTunes, or I think it was iTunes, but I, I have this soundtrack. Because it's just one of the... I listen to it at least once a week. It's just so good. And I love how it's more of a movie. And that's pretty much what it basically is. Like, there's zero gameplay in this game. Uh, you, you can move your character back and forth and press A to, you know, click on something. But it's mostly just you watching things unfold and experiencing. I love the cuts, the camera cuts it uses. It's so much like a movie... And that's what it's trying to be, and that's why I think this game is a masterpiece, because I think the developers of the game did exactly what they set out to do, and 
dare I say, almost did it perfectly. I know there's some things wrong with this game, but this is the number two game of the year. Well, this should come as no surprise to anybody. My number one ID at Xbox game of 2016 is none other than Play, De Play Dead's masterpiece, Inside. That's right. I said it. It's a masterpiece along with Virginia. But I think this game is a little bit better than Virginia, even though they're both masterpieces in my opinion. I mean, what more needs to be said about Inside that I haven't already said on countless podcasts this year? TXR, Crossfire, Xbox Nation, Basement Radio Arcade Podcast, Super Deforms Gamecast, any podcast that I've been on, I have exposed how amazing this game is and how developers have improved on uh, the cinematic platformer genre or whatever whatever you would call this that's what i call it basically um they basically took limbo and just made it better in every way yeah i know the puzzles aren't as hard as they are in limbo but the game's not supposed to be about that um <laughs> i mean everything about this game is almost perfect the way it plays the way it looks the music the sound design the narrative, how it basically tells a story just through images and not at all through dialogue. I mean, my number one and my number two games don't have any dialogue in them that say more with, you know, the framing of a scene and things like that than AAA games out there. That should tell you a lot. But I absolutely adore this game. I think it's better than Limbo. I'm not saying that Limbo's not great because it is. But people play this game do not spoil yourself on what happens in this game i try to remain as vague as possible i'd never because the ending sequences is something that needs to be seen you believe just spoiling yourself is you know it'd be like watching the sixth sense and then finding out you know before and knowing what happens i'm not even going to say that because people are spoiler crazy but do yourself a favor play the game whether it's at full price half price or whatever and don't spoil yourself just play the game without knowing anything about it it's my number one game of the year um maybe you'll see it in my top 10 games of 2016 it could possibly show up there you never know but hey i hope you guys enjoyed my top 10 ID at Xbox games. Um, they, they're putting out a lot of content. I remember when people were talking mad, mad shit about the ID at Xbox program back, you know, in 2014, 2013, talking about that parody um, clause that Xbox has. But it seems now that's gone. We're constantly getting like three to four to five games a week in the program. There have been some gems. This might have been like the best year for indie games in a long time. There's certainly a lot of them. I mean, there's a lot of contenders. Um, I could have probably picked another five games at a top 15, but still, top 10 game. Number one, couldn't be any other game than this masterpiece inside. Um, links will be in the description to their uh, Xbox links, the, the Xbox store page, in case any of you guys out there want to you know, dig deeper and check out and maybe purchase the game. Uh, I'll leave links in there. Um, well, guys, uh, if you liked the video, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel as I will have a couple videos every day uh, for this week. I have, a, I have a lot planned. We're going to be doing my top 10 most anticipated for 2017. That's coming up. We're going to do my top 10 games of 2016. I got that one coming up. Um, I have the Xbox Year in Review coming up. A uh, lot, lot, of, lot of great things happening on the channel. So stay tuned, subscribe, because there's going to be a lot of stuff coming. Hope you all have a good rest of the day. And I will see everybody tomorrow. Later.